So the first step that I'm starting with, everything is prepared, fused. I am starting with step 2D on page 3, which is basting the um, basting the uh, insulated batting. And I've got the shiny side facing out or away from, um, this is the exterior of the fabric, or the exterior of the bag. So I've got exterior fabric, fusible interfacing, and then insulated batting uh, facing towards what will be the lining of the bag. And I'm going to base that, um, which is my longest stitch length, uh, with um, a quarter inch seam allowance. I just slow down when I get to the corners. It's easier to slow down than to rip out stitching. And you don't need to back stitch, it's just basting stitches. They may even come out later. That's okay. So that is the back. Okay, so this is piece A. And I've cut notches here. Um, it just makes it easier to trim the batting away later and it also makes it so it's not too bulky in those um, otherwise really bulky seams. So it doesn't really matter where you start. Uh, but again, I've got the shiny side out um, and this is the exterior piece A. I have a Bernina 570 with built-in dual feed. It's kind of like having halfway to a walking foot. So um, half the middle portion of my foot in the back um, has a feed dog on it. Um, and you can set the presser foot tension, the presser foot pressure. Um, and it allows me to um, get away with not having an industrial walking foot machine, which I do not have room for. Um, it really only limits me in the thickness of materials that I can sew through, and that's okay because I want you to be able to sew everything. Um, but it does make things easier on my hands, which have issues. Um, I don't have to force anything through my machine, it just glides right through. Um, <clears throat> as long as I'm using the right needles, the right thread, everything is pretty smooth. Um, but yeah, I do not have room in my space for an industrial. And I also sew a lot of other things that I don't, um, a straight stitch machine won't work for. Um, I need to have zigzag, I need to have other things. Um, I need that versatility and I do not have room for more than one machine. Um, when I make clothes for the kids, the overlocker gets set up on the kitchen table. Um, I do not have space for that. So this is a really, this is an expensive machine, but it's really versatile. It allows me to do just about everything, um, except sew through, I think eight layers of vinyl is my limit. And you don't want to do that anyway, because it doesn't look great. Um, so I just try to keep the bulk out of my seams, and um, that lets me sew a lot more on this machine. And it lets you sew it at home too. Um, if you have an industrial, there's no reason that you can't sew these on an industrial. If, so I've basted all of the three exterior pieces, A, B, and C, and I'm trimming away the excess insulated batting. This is just in the seam allowance. The basting stitches will hold it in place. And um, this is my preferred method. And if you struggle with this, if you see this step on my patterns, you're like, oh no, trimming seam allowance, you need new scissors. 
If you're using um, foam or interfacing, you can just glide the scissors right through. The foil on this makes it a little more challenging. I do not have the dexterity that people um, who so have. <laughs> so I, if I can do this, you should be able to do this. So I, I would say if you struggle with this, it could be your tools. So you might want to invest in some new tools. Um, so you'll see at the corner here, this just allows um, you to trim this clear away from this corner. So if it was stitched into the corner, you would still have that bit that would get folded over and it would create a lot more bulk in that corner and we don't want that. Um, so that's, I made those really dramatic so you could see them. You don't have to make them that big. You really just need to clear that stitching to make it easier to stitch, to cut this out and then just keep you could also not your feasible interfacing any additional interfacing or stabilizer i typically block fuse which means i fuse my interfacing to a piece bigger than my pattern piece before i cut out my pattern piece and so that prevents you from notching the fusible interfacing so that's just a choice that you have to make um this is insole fleece um, I prefer it to insole bright. Um, it does not crinkle as much, um, so it doesn't make that loud crinkly noise, and it doesn't seem to cut up my hands as much. So, whatever the finish is on it, it is kinder, and it is quieter. So, I recommend insole fleece. One more on this. And then, the back. Okay, so that is A, B, and C trimmed. So you just fold these, and make sure I'm in the frame here. So marking the tops and bottoms, you just fold, and then you can either mark, um, I usually use a friction pen if I'm going to mark. Um, So you can mark or you you can also just clip as long as you keep it within the seam allowance so that's usually the easiest way is to just clip and then you've got a triangle that shows your top and bottom so we'll do that with all of them And then I will repeat that with the lining. And then the zipper. We go okay so that is marked moving on so i have cut um my bias tape so this is bias tape extra wide double fold and it's just from the craft store so i have 28 inches on my bias tape and that's the page three so now everything should be cut fused and basted and we will move on to step three, sew mesh pocket on page four. Two, this is a universal needle. You can use a stretch needle or a ballpoint needle. You do not want to use a sharp needle on elastic. It will skip stitches. You also, if you're using top stitch thread, it may want to use thinner thread because these needles, I'm using an 8012 here. Um, they have a smaller eye than a top stitch needle or a denim needle and you will get drag on your thread through the eye of the needle if you're using too small of a needle and too thick of thread, but I think I should be okay. I will baby it. So I've got my mesh pocket. I'll do this here. <laughs> you can see it. Yes. Um, so there, the, the elastic is wider than the mesh pocket. 
um, you need something to grab onto on both um, on both ends. Now, um, I don't expect this to stretch too much. Um, it's just to put an ice pack in. So, um, I'm going to put clips on this to hold it there. Um, so you could use um, double stick tape. If And also you can get wider holdover elastic, which makes this a lot easier. This is a really narrow um, holdover elastic. The wider it is, the easier, the bigger surface you have to sew on. So I have a bit of an overhang there, a little bit of a tail, and that allows you to have something to grab onto at the back of the machine. You just wanna make sure everything is completely enclosed so it's all the way up to the fold. So you want that mesh to be all the way up to the fold. And then I would sew with a zigzag. And then having the overlap at the end, um, at the beginning and at the end, it, this allows you to get your stitches started and make sure that they're in the right spot so that you can adjust if you need to, um, if you need to move them over. Let me get it in there. So now I have something to hold on to because I got those stitches started. So I've got, there we go, right at the edge. You want them close to the edge. Um, because you really want it to grab onto that mesh. If you've got your stitches way up at the, the far edge, the outside edge, it's not gonna grab onto the mesh. And you want the stitches either centered or towards the bottom of the elastic. And I've got a four wide by one and a half length zigzag stitch. Every machine is different and every elastic is different. I am putting tension on the back. That is how my machine does best with elastic is actually putting tension on it. Um, that kind of, again, every machine is different. I mean, if you've never done this before, I would practice. If you've never sewed anything with elastic before, I would practice. And I just did a little back stitch there. There we go. So there you can see that. So that is a zigzag stitch across the mesh. So I'm going to trim off the extra bits. I know that's at the end, but I've made like 10 of these. Lining back. And we're gonna draw a line. So I'm going to draw my line I, I like the way the front of this looks so I'm going to choose that as my my right side I'm going to put it right side together upside down and sew the bottom of the pocket with two lines of stitching so a half inch and a quarter inch from the line so and I'm just using a straight stitch. So here's a half inch. I'm back stitching. And I went back to a construction length, so I'm at two and a half. And then I'm back stitching here. And then I have a big enough um, arm under my machine here. But I'm just gonna flip this around and go the other way. So now I've got my quarter inch seam. This is just to make sure that you, because of the holes in the mesh, it's just to make sure that you've caught everything and that it's, it's not going to come off. So, and then trim all those threads and then fold that back up. So you don't need to stretch it, just fold it. There's a little bit of fold here, a little bit of slack. That's okay. Um, it's going to hold an ice pack, so it's okay if there's a little bit of slack. And then I'm going to clip these and then very quickly just make sure that they're even. So I just throw my ruler on here. So that's even. So then I'm just going to baste up the sides.
And sometimes the mesh can be picky if it you can manipulate it so that, especially if you've got like a um, stiletto or tweezers, you can kind of feed it through um, so that it doesn't all get pushed down to the end. Um, you really have a lot of, um, you can play with it a lot. You can, you can guide the mesh into place very easily. That was step three, that's done. And we'll set that aside. And I'm going to change my needle. So now I need to press my straps. So I have a loop and two backpack straps. Okay, so I've got my backpack strap E. I've got this is canvas, but I've got the feasible interfacing in the center. I prefer it if you're using canvas, it's not required. So I'm going to fold this in half, wrong sides together and press. I use a lot of steam. If you're using something you can't press, you can use tape. I figured this fabric, or this pattern, everybody's going to use a cotton fabric of some sort because it needs to be food safe. So I figured the instructions will be very similar no matter what type of fabric you use. You okay, sweetie? Okay. It's hard to do with the camera in the way, but we'll make it work. So then, so I've folded this in half, I've unfolded it, I've folded it to the center, and then I'm going to fold it in half again and close those raw edges and press. So, and we'll do that one more time because we have one more strap. So, fold this in half. Wrong sides together. Unfold, fold to the center. Do one side at a time if that's easier to hold. Fold, press, fold, press. You do not have to go all the way there to the center. There is no hardware. It doesn't have to be exact as long as they're the same. Um, leaving that little bit of gap in the middle helps it fold this time. So then we'll fold it again and close the raw edges, press, and then I will top stitch that in a second. And we'll fold the loop first. So I've got the little loop for the top. Same thing, the interfacing is just in the center. So I fold that the exact same way. Fold it in half, lengthwise, unfold, fold to the center. Fold both to the center. And then fold in half and press. So then we will top stitch those three. Okay, so I've got the exterior back and I'm going to clip the loop right at the top in the center. And just bring that around. And then I've got the backpack straps. and then I'm gonna baste right across there.
right. So then um, just measure this. Measurements are in the pattern. So there is a little bit of slack in the backpack straps. Um, they're just grab handles. I did lengthen them on Charlie's just for fun um, so that he could wear it to be like big brother. Um, it was hilarious. It's not very functional. A uh, 17 month old is not going to wear a backpack. Um, <laughs> but it was funny. So that's why I say they're not functional because we did try it and it was it was silly. But I mean, come on, this is this is too funny. So anyway, um, let me base those into place. They do work really well as grab handles, though. Um, I've said this thing to school every day with Emmett this whole school year, and it's fantastic. It's better than his lunch bag that I made him. Okay, so now we're going to add the inside. This piece is added now because it, it's not birthed. Um, if it was birthed, this would be separate, but it's, it's going to have binding, so we're just going to base this on right now. make sure everything's lined up. This also gives a little bit extra reinforcement to these. Make sure this is lined up. You've got those center marks to make sure that everything's lined up and isn't stretched out. Okay, so I like to turn my threads and check everything, um, make sure there's not a lot of overhang that's gonna be absorbed into the seam allowance in the end, so I'm not going to fix that, um, trim off any other little bits. Um, this one's sticking out a little bit, so I'm just going to trim that because you don't want it to interfere with the binding at the end. Um, so I'll just trim this little bit that's hanging over the edge. Get my okay. And then same there. So that's kind of, it's. You just want to give it a clean start. Okay. So that is now basted. So that's your back. And we will set that aside. That is the end of page five. And the end of step four. So now we're on to step five. So the zipper. So this is the gusset C exterior piece it is right sides together with the zipper. So zipper is face down, exterior piece is face up, um, right sides together. I do have some double-sided basting tape on here, but I'm also going to baste it with a quarter inch seam allowance. And then did match the center. So I'm placing the lining right sides together with the exterior piece and matching that center and then matching the edges. And I'm going to stitch this from the right side so that the zipper coils are up and this piece is already basted so it should be more stabilized and it will help feed the lining through evenly. And I'm going to sew this with a uh, construction stitch length, so two and a half and a three eighths inch seam allowance and backstitch at the beginning and end. So then I fold the fabric back. 
away from the zipper, press that. I'm using cotton fabric so I can use a lot of steam. I avoid holding the iron over the zipper foil so they don't melt. The nylon zipper. You just have to be very careful. So I'm moving the zipper pulls back to the center and then I will top stitch and baste. Increase that to a basting stitch and continue around the outside just to finish securing this. Okay, so we also want to tack the ends, not at the edge of the fabric, but all the way at the very end of the zipper. And I am just sewing over that. This is a nylon zipper. So I'm just sewing over the end of the zipper tape through the teeth on both sides. This will um, keep the zipper pulls from coming all the way off, especially once you get to the very end step, they're gonna to wanna to pull right off. Um, so that, that needs to be tacked, so make sure you tack that. Just sewing over it twice with a basting stitch. I just stitched right over that. Let's see if I can. So I just stitched right there, right there. Okay, so the last step on page six, step 5D, is to mark the back of the zipper tape. Um, so we want to mark, these are guidelines for installing it um, in the rest of the bag. So I'm going to mark at the edge. So I'm just going to line up the ruler with the edge of the fabric. So you can see right there, so I'm marking the edge. Then I'm going to mark, it's easier to do this way. So then I'm gonna mark 3 eighths of an inch from the edge of the fabric, from that mark, and then 3 quarters of an inch from the edge of the fabric, from the mark. I'll do the same on this side. So mark edge of the fabric. And then three eighths and three quarters. Okay. So now I have the exterior piece A and I'm gonna place the gusset right sides together, the zipper at the top matching the center. Just clip that into place matching the centers. And then I'm gonna wrap this around here like this and line up the three quarter inch mark. So the fabric should be past this edge of the side, three quarters of an inch. So that's the line right there, the three quarter inch line. So you have to line those up. And then same thing on the other side. So you want the three quarter inch line from the edge of the fabric to match up with the top of the side. Okay, now I unzip zipper to make it um, easier to ease around the curve. Less stiff this way. And because we've tacked it, it's not coming off. So you just kind of ignore this. Um, if you can fold it up in the center, you can just kind of ignore it. Just throw a clip on there so it kind of stays. Okay. And then you want to ease the zipper around the curve. So and just use a bunch of wonder clips on this. If you have to, you can make notches, little tiny notches into the zipper. I try to not snip the zipper tape unless I absolutely have to, but it's better to get it to lay flat, to snip a tiny little snip. You can apply free check. It's better to get it to lay flat. Um, if it pops up too much this way, um, it'll catch your needle and you don't want that. So. 
Um, you can just make one tiny little snip or a couple tiny little snips right in the corner. Don't go too deep. Um, you don't want it to fray and you don't want it to show through. It's an option to get your zipper to lay nicely around the curve. You can't use too many clips. Okay. And then you want to baste around this with a quarter inch seam allowance and you will go to that 3 8 inch mark, which is why that's there. So the 3 8 inch line, 3 8 of an inch past here. So that's where you'll stop your stitching. So I am basting. Okay. So stitching, quarter inch seam allowance, or basting, quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to back up, back stitch into that line, no farther than that line. And then I'm going to ease this around. I have tweezers. You can use a stiletto and just flatten that zipper as much as possible. And this is a basting step so that you can get it just right. Make any adjustments before you add the lining. It takes a lot of stress out. The biggest stitch length you have will be much easier to rip out than a tiny construction stitch if you need to adjust. So again, I'm gonna stitch past the corner to the 3 8 inch mark and then back stitch. Normally I don't back stitch when I'm basting, but you want that corner to be secure. Okay. So now I'm gonna add the lining, match that center at the top. Okay, so mat mark or match the centers and then match these corners. And clip this all the way around. You want to fold the zipper as flat as possible and get that lining all the way at the edge. Lining. See that one right there? It really wants to sit up. So that's part if you want to. Let's snip that just a little bit. Not quite all the way to the basting stitches. And that will, that will help it lay flat. So from the lining side that is clipped, just ignore this lining exterior. And then I flip it back to this side um, and I follow the, you can see where you've stitched to the 3 8 inch mark. So I follow that line of stitching to show my 3 8 inch mark, but I use a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Um, if you prefer to stitch from the lining side, you can just mark the 3 8 inch, but it's already there with the stitching. So you just come down that far and stitch around it. So then I start a little bit farther up, start sewing and back stitch. I have to kind of lift my presser foot up to see exactly where those stitches are, but it's worth being really accurate. So I am there. So I back stitched into that mark and I'm going to stitch around the zipper with the 3 8 inch seam allowance. And then as you go, just flatten that zipper to make sure you're not sticking through the zipper teeth that are going to try to pop back up. You can just peek between and sometimes I have to flip it back. Just do a small section at a time. And then I'm going to 
go right to that mark. Look, make sure. And take one more tiny little stitch on your back stitch. Got it. Okay. So, right there. Three eighths of an inch, three eighths of an inch past this top edge. And then, charming the curves, you can use pinking shears. And you don't want to trim the zipper, so make sure you've separated the lining from the zipper. You do not want to trim the zipper. Use pinking shears to just trim a little bit of that corner. So just the fabric, not the zipper. Do the same thing on here. If you need to separate the basting stitches from the zipper to get enough of it to trim away, you can do that. I think I've left enough. I stitched close enough. Okay, so I left the zipper and just trimmed a little bit of the fabric on both sides. And then if you don't have pinking shears or don't want to use them, just trim a little bit with scissors. So trim a little bit of fabric, a little bit of fabric, and then um, at the curve, you can take out a couple little notches and that'll just help the fabric lay flatter. I do this more in the lining. Um, Especially you can see where I had to snip. That's where it's gonna buckle. So that's where you can pull it out of the lining. And just, I will just do one here. And this just gives the fabric somewhere to go on that curve. So there's two options. So then you need to trim the corners. So you want to trim from the corner. So you do not want to trim any of the zipper so just pull that zipper back so that you're not going to cut through it and you you can cut if you need to cut through the basting stitches you can pop out the basting stitches so you just want you want that corner free and then cut from the corner just the fabric to the stitches. And then same thing on the other side. So just the fabric. Let's probably see it better on this side. So just the fabric. No zipper. Right there. This is just like Cutting the corners when you do a welt zipper pocket. And it will allow it to fold. So we'll do the same thing on this side. I'm going to pop out those basting stitches. Just the fabric. I'm going to hold on to the zipper so I don't accidentally cut it. To those that three eighths inch mark to those stitches not through them not into the like center over here okay and then same thing on the lining hold on to that zipper and stitch or and cut right to those stitches so it's just like making a zipper pocket with the window when you cut into the corners of the window so now i'm going to turn this top of this right side out so i'm just sticking my hand in here in like a pot holder pulling it out And then I usually press this. Okay. So pull that out as much as you can. You do not top stitch yet. So we press it 
but do not top stitch this yet. There's another step before top stitching. This is as flat as you're gonna get this, so that's why I, I pressed this now. This is as flat as you're gonna get. It's a great opportunity to press it. Bye. And then you need to zip this up just a little bit. So zip up the zipper part of the way. I'm gonna take that off. Zip up the zipper. Just up the straight part. Okay. So you don't have to zip it all the way. Just zip it part of the way. That way your zipper is zipped in the part that we're going to be sewing next. So then you've got sides right there. And then flip. So we've got sides. Flip this up. So this is the tricky the tricky part. So you flip this up and then you turn it over and you flip it up in the back too. So you flip both of these up. So the A piece is folded in half towards the front and half towards the back. So the exterior is folded right sides together, exterior right sides together, lining is folded right sides together separately. So then you take these edges, so you've got the side of the exterior, the gusset, so right sides together for the exterior pieces, and then right sides together for the lining. And you line all of them up, all the way across. So then the other side, you've got exterior, right sides together, and lining, right sides together. And you match the edges. You match the sides, and then you match the bottom. And we're going to sew through all of those layers and the zipper. Okay, so there we go. You do not sew into this part. You do not sew into this part. You'll stitch three eighths of an inch seam allowance and you'll end it right at that corner. So you'll come right to that corner, stitch across here and come right to the corner. It's easier to see on the lining. So you can see where the fold is. You stitch, it's a three eighths inch seam allowance straight across there and straight across there. This is page 10, step five N. And I back stitch here. I'm going to stitch over the zipper teeth and then very carefully you stitch into that corner and then you can just stitch off. And then you just back stitch on the zipper tape or straight over them again. three-eighths inch seam allowance straight into that corner but not into the fabric and you just stop and then you can back stitch right there so you go right to that corner and then repeat on the other side so you can either do the side from the lining or I'm just gonna start in that corner I'm gonna start on the zipper tape get my stitches started stitch right into that corner I am going to back stitch with that zipper tape just for reinforcement, or the zipper teeth, sorry, just for reinforcement, and then stitch across and back stitch. So stitch across here, but not, not into this. So stitch right there and end at that corner, and then same thing on the back. Okay, so step 5-0 on page 10, we need to trim the, the excess zipper tape. So I'm just going to cut, it doesn't have to be perfect, I'll just cut off the extra. And you're done with that. 
So then I'm going to turn it right side out. So I'm going to fold this down. So fold the exterior down and flip it over and fold the lining down and then press all of this. So I line up these edges. Um, that just helps make it as even as possible. Now, um, just like a zipper pocket window, the inside may not look as great um, and that's okay. And you can also kind of fix it with the top stitching and we can fix it as we press, but um, you might have a little pucker there and that's okay. I want it to look good on the outside. So that's where I'm gonna focus on really pressing this. And you can get this really flat and straight. So give it a really good press. Now, if you're concerned about this corner, um, you can add a little drop of fray check either here or um, on the inside. So you can add a little drop of fray check or fray block if you want to. I don't see any, um, I don't see the edge of the fabric through there. So I don't have any fraying starting and that's going to get top stitched. So if you normally do that on zipper pocket windows, um, then you might want to do it here. Okay, so that is pressed really well. Step five Q is top stitch through all the layers an eighth inch from the seam. So I'm gonna top stitch from the edge here and go all the way around and finish there. All the way around the curve and the sides. Change this to a top stitch. Make sure nothing gets caught on the bottom. And then just be really careful coming into this corner. Just smooth it out. Take like one stitch past the corner and pivot. And this can get a little tricky. Turn it inside out. Whatever you need to do, unzip. Zip up or unzip. And just make sure you don't catch this part. slowly. Lift your presser foot to turn if necessary. Just try to keep it even. Flatten that corner, take a stitch past the corner, pivot, and stitch all the way across on, through the sides. If your fabric is really thick, I guess I should mention, you can trim, so you could trim that away. Um, you could trim this if you need to before you stitch it, or you could go back now once it's all secure and trim it. But we cut all of the batting out of that seam so there should only be fabric and a little bit of interfacing. Um, so it shouldn't be too thick, but if, if you have a machine that really struggles with bulk, you can do that. So that is top stitched. Okay, so you can press one more time. Um, I always do. I zip this up now, um, just part of the way, and I leave that open. You want to make sure you leave some of that open. Switch that. Okay, so that is the end of step five. So step six is box the corners and finish the front. So you want to match the exterior to the exterior and the lining to the lining. So you just take the exterior, front corners, and match them together. Exterior front corners, match them together. And then the same with the lining. So you still got the lining free, match the lining. Okay, so match the lining. 
We're going to sew these separately so that we can press them opposite directions. So then you're going to sew each of these with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. So one, two, three, four seams with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Exterior and lining, all the three eighths of seam allowance. Okay, so I am going to press the seam allowance the opposite direction. So um, it's easiest to do this with it still sort of inside out. Um, I'm going to press the seam allowance for the exterior um, towards the top. So this way towards the top of the bag. I think it just sits nicer. And then do the opposite on the lining so that they can nest. So I'm just going to do this from the fabric side and press that really well. And then do the opposite on the lining. Make sure it gets pressed the opposite way. So in this case, towards the bottom. And then flip that back. And then nest those. So, just put them so they're going opposite. So you've got seam allowance. One towards the top and one towards the bottom. And clip that. So same thing, seam allowance for the lining this way, seam allowance for the exterior this way. Nest them, clip that, and then I match that center point, clip that, and then we're going to baste. So this is already basted here, so we're going to baste right around the bottom and make sure those stay lined up, stay matched up. Hi buddy, are you helping? Are you helping? I'm actually gonna take my extension table off for this so that I can do it from the exterior side. And if you don't have a free arm, you can sew from the inside, like if you have a flatbed machine, you can sew from the inside, um, sew from the lining, however, however you need to make it work. This is just easiest on my machine. It's available to me, so I'm gonna take advantage of the easy way. Okay, so that is basted. Trim any excess threads or any lining overhang Bunch of little threads. Hey Jack, hi. Okay. So that is the entire front of the bag completed. So we just have to put the back on. So that is the front. It's all done. So that is the end of step six. And moving on to step seven. So we are going to um, start to attach the binding. So what I'm going to do is because I'm using um, pre-made bias tape. 
I am going to unfold the one side and then um, I'm going to fold it. So this will just create a nice finish. And then just refold that. So we crease that, put those creases back in. So if you've made your own bias tape, it'll just be folded on the one edge and that's fine. So then this is the key step is you want to turn this lining side out. So, okay. So start with the lining side turned out. So this is the wrong side of the zipper and the lining side, the inside of the bag. Set it up like a bowl. And then start with the folded piece of binding somewhere along the bottom. Doesn't really matter. There just isn't a lot of bulk at the bottom. You don't want to start at one of the seams and just start clipping that with one side unfolded. So if you've made it, you'll just have the bottom folded. You only need to fold one side to start with, but if you've purchased it, packaged bias tape, binding, just unfold. Wrap it around. And then it should overlap. So right there, you want to overlap right on top. So you've got the part that you folded um, the end of and then the raw edge just right on top. And then sew all the way around it. So I'm going to base with a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around. Okay, so that's basted all the way around with a quarter inch seam allowance. And this is overlapped. So you've got a folded edge and a raw edge. So you should just have two pieces now, the front and the back. And um, you want to make sure that there is still a bit of an opening um, with the zipper because even though this is binding, we still need to turn the bag out. So we need that to be unzipped just a little bit. So make sure that's there or you'll be breaking into your zipper later. Um, so these are going to go right sides together. So take your back piece and you want to match up the top. This is where those notches are really helpful. So match up the center at the top and then match up the center at the bottom. and then baste just the straight parts here and here. And that way it'll just help everything stay together when you ease in the curves. I always baste my straight sides if possible. It helps so much. You don't have to use as many clips. Um, so if there are straight parts, I take advantage. Put this in your machine however it best goes in. So I'm basting with a quarter inch seam allowance just the straight parts.
you're not easing around the curve yet. This will make sure that the bag isn't lopsided and it will stay lined up. Even if you have to fudge those curves a little, top and bottom will be straight. Okay. So this is now basted on at the top and the bottom. So then we're going to do the same thing with the sides. So I clip, I use wonder clips on the curves. Now, if you find it a tight fit, you can clip into the gust of the sides. Um, so clip into this part if you need to make a couple little snips. There was some discussion in the tester group about making that a straight side. I did try to make that a straight side, um, and there's so much bulk in that corner that you do not get a sharp corner. So it was actually easier in the end to give it a tiny little rounded corner, and it looks the same in the end, and you don't have to worry about sewing into one corner, sewing into the other corner, and then dealing with the binding um, in a sharp corner. So it just worked out better. I did test it that way. Um, I did not find it to be easier and it didn't look um, that much different. So this just is easier and we want easy. Especially if we're gonna do binding, we want it to be easy. Okay, so now we're gonna base just the straight sides with a quarter inch seam allowance and that will allow you to remove some of the clips and it will make sure that the bag is straight. It'll make sure that it's square. Um, so that it sits correctly and not lopsided so that when you do go to ease in those curves You don't end up with all the fabric shifted to one corner and the whole bag is lopsided So I always base my straight sides um, It just helps so much and then I also want to mention that at this in this step you are just ignoring the binding so um, This is going to create the 3 8 inch seam allowance in the, eventually around um, and it's going to hit your binding right where you need it to fold. So it's just attached because it was easier to attach it um, when this piece wasn't attached. Otherwise, going back and trying to sew around those curves with all that bulk multiple times um, can cause problems. So this is just, it's attached now and you just kind of forget about it. Make sure that it doesn't get in the way in the seams. <clears throat> Excuse me. So make sure that it doesn't get in the way. Make sure that it doesn't get caught up in the seams but you just kind of ignore that it's there for this step. So I am just gonna baste those straight sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. Be careful sewing over the elastic. A little bit. I just wanna make sure everything is lined up. I'm not going to sew into that curve yet. Just basting the straight sides. So I just put that clip back because I had to take it off to get my presser foot to fit in there. So this is basted, this is basted. Now we're gonna sew around the entire thing. So we're gonna sew around the whole thing with a 3 8 inch seam allowance. 
Again, just ignoring that binding. Now, you can do this however is easiest for your machine. Um, I like to sew it this way. Sewing it this way um, allows these corners to be, you can pull them up or you can fold them up. Um, and then if you need to, you can clip corner into the corner if you need it to lay flat. So if you're finding that it's, you know, not easing around the curve and there's too much, too much curve and not enough of the gusset, then you can make a little clip and that will help it lay flat. So you could do one or two of those. Just don't go too deep. Try to stay within that, um, the basting stitches within that quarter inch seam allowance. So I'm going to sew all the way around with three eighths inch seam allowance. This is your construction stitch. So I'm going to go back down to two and a half and I'm going to sew all the way around. Again, just ignore that bindings there. Keep it out of the way. And so one more little snip. I want this to come all the way to the end of that curve. So it's a nice, smooth curve. I am using my zipper foot for this. And just readjust as you go. Move the bulk out of the way and then readjust and move it out of the way the other direction. Unzip this all the way. You need to get it to get in there. If you need to, um, you can clip that top corner too. And then I also use my tweezers because um, my hands are not very strong to get it right in the right spot and then help feed it through. So then you're back to the straight fit. So you can take a little breather because this is already basted. So once you get around that corner, just sew, readjust everything. So that straight line and then back to the curve. So I am going to clip a couple of clips, snips into the curve. Again, just grab it with my tweezers and position it. These are overlocker tweezers from Bernina. Um, the Tula Pink Rainbow tweezers I have floating around here are the same. They're really good. Okay. So I'm just shifting and readjusting this so that it feeds through. And this is what needs to be flat. It doesn't matter how much bulk is over here, the part right in front of and underneath your pressing foot is what needs to be flat to avoid puckers. So that got caught in the basting stitches, but it's okay because it's still a good seam allowance. It's fine. It's not going to show. And then I'm going to come down to this bottom corner and I'm going to clip that and just redistribute all of this bulk. Move it all out of the way so that you can get your corner as flat as possible. Okay. Make sure it goes all the way to the, to the edge of the curve. So, got really flat there. All right, there's my, okay, good. And back to the beginning, match up that 3 8 inch seam allowance there, and back stitched. Okay, so that is 3 8 inch seam allowance stitched all the way around. And then we're just going to flip the binding over and sew that. So if you've got any bits that stick out, just make sure this is a smooth curve here. You can go back and fix it. And then um, I don't like to remove too much in the corners because if you remove, if you trim this all away, you're not gonna have anything to attach your binding to. So you won't have anything underneath and that won't, that won't work very well. Um, but if it's sticking out way too much, um, trim away. I mean, look how, how little I'm trimming away. You can just shave that away 
um, to make sure that that stays a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Otherwise, your binding will not wrap all the way around. Um, so just, you can just trim a tiny little bit. I'm, I'm just shaving that off. And then if you've got a lot of bulk in that corner, um, you can take a little tiny notch out of it, but make sure you don't cut through this part of the binding. So I'm just gonna take, you do not have to do this. It will work without doing this. But if you do have a lot of bulk there, I think somebody was asking about the corner. So if you have a ton of bulk in that corner, see? Just one little notch out of that corner and that corner. And I don't think it's necessary on the top curves at all. Okay, so I've got my iron hot to press this binding. This is step 8D on page 13. And so I'm just going to flip this binding up. So I've got a 3 8 seam allowance sewn all the way around. And I'm just going to flip it, flip it up. Okay, now I'm just gonna press this to get it as smooth and flat as possible. Be careful not to burn yourself. Um, I just like to pull that straight up from that seam. So I'm not pressing this part. I'm not pressing up here, I'm pressing this seam right here. Okay, I just want that to look really nice. So now, get a million clips ready. Clip all the way around. So I like to put one at either end of the straight parts and one in the middle. Just ease those curves and put one right in the middle of the curve and then distribute it like that. And then the bottom, you'll have the, this is the folded edge, the nice folded edge, the raw edge, and I just unfold those, match them, fold them, over and then fold them again and clip that into place. And then again, I'm gonna clip on both ends of the straight sides. So it's folded under, so this is, this is folded under, so this is a folded edge around the outside and then the raw edges are all hidden on the inside. And the one there and I get this a little bit tighter. There. There we go. And smooth that one out. Good. Okay. So we're going to sew around the outside of the binding, just inside of that seam allowance. So that means you don't want to go farther into the bag. You want to stitch on the binding inside of the seam allowance that's existing. So it's smaller than a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I think it's easier to sew it from this side. Um, there's enough overhang there that you're, you're going to catch it, or you can go back and get it um, if there's a spot that you miss. But I'm going to sew from this side right inside that seam allowance. So I know this is the scary step. I'm going to start down at the bottom just to make sure that that's all tucked in. I'm still using my zipper foot. I use my zipper foot for a lot. My zipper foot is three inch wide, which helps. Make sure of that. Okay. So again, just get the part that you're sewing as flat as possible. Don't worry so much about this over here distribute that out of the way. I make little kind of little pleats to get it as flat as possible. If you've ever overlocked something, it's 
very similar to how you have to like make a straight curve on an overlocker by pinching the fabric. Do the same thing. Straight side so you get a little bit of a rest. And then back into this curve. So now I'm gonna pull this down here and redistribute all of that bulk this way. Hi, Charlie, I'll be right there. Baby's awake, last step. trim these while I have access to them. So trim these threads and I backstitch at the beginning and backstitch at the end. Go around that last curve, put it as flat as possible. And then back to the beginning and backstitch and should be done. Okay, so the stitching is done, the binding is on, this is, bag is finished, we just need to turn it out. Um, so just double check and make sure that you've caught your binding all the way around. This is a pretty good finish. Um, it looks really good from this side. So I'm gonna turn it and see what we've got. So turn it right side out, push out the corners. So oh, that's, look at that corner. That's a nice smooth round corner. Let me push this one out a little bit more. So there we go, look at that. And then these top corners, nice and smooth. So you can give it a little final press, a little touch up if it needs it. Um, but yeah, there you go. Snack pack is complete. zips down so you can see all of your goodies there's room for the ice pack in there I will go get some snacks and add it so you can see what fits there's lots of pictures on the listing so with the loop um, it's a grab handle or you can add a carabiner and clip it to your bag um, and then I love the little grab handles um, and it's just super cute it's so fun so you have a backpack for your snacks so there you go Okay, so just a quick size demonstration. Um, there's tons of pictures on the website with Dasani bottles and cans of soda and things like that. Um, so this is my favorite ice pack size because it will keep things cold for a lot longer than these little tiny ones. So this is the Igloo Small. I think they come in a two pack at Target. And this is my favorite. So this fits. Little applesauce pouch, little juice box, um, taller things fit, um, goldfish crackers, let's see if I can fit the banana in there, banana, banana for scale, goldfish crackers, and there's still a little bit of room there, you could still put like a little like Snickers bar or something at the top, um, but there's tons of room in there, so um, while it's a small like lunch bag, it's a small bag, it's a it's a big snack bag. You can fit a lot in there. So I hope that helps. There's tons of pictures on the website with baby bottles, camelbacks, um, cans of soda, things like that. So take a look at the website for size. I've gotten emails. People have asked me about making the straps longer. So on this one, um, I made the strap 18 inches. Um, and then I just added the strap tab at the bottom and the hardware to make it adjustable. And this fits Charlie. Um, it's like, he can wear it as a joke, like to look like Big Brother. Um, someone emailed me and asked if they could put it on a dog. I mean, I guess if you could attach it to a harness. It, it Honestly, I just made the straps for fun. They're just fun. They're a good little grab handle. So when I'm putting this in and out of the backpack, um, they work really well as a little grab handle instead of just having a little loop. Um, 
So I wouldn't suggest making functional straps, um, but I'll, I'll post a picture of Charlie wearing this because it's, it's adorable. Um, it doesn't really go beyond adorable because it's not gonna hold much. Um, I will show you uh, the packing cube one that I use. So I made Charlie one that's a packing cube. I used fusible fleece instead of insulated batting and it holds, now he's size 24 month. So it will hold an outfit, like a, a romper. And this is like a sizable pack of travel wipes. So it's 20 travel wipes, with the flip top lip. It's really not just like the little tiny um, pack. And then it will fit, it'll fit two diapers. If I need to change him in the stroller or the back of my car, I like to have the little disposable mat. Um, but anyway, it'll fit that or it'll fit two diapers. So, and these are large diapers. Um, I think they're size five. Um, so that fits in there. So these aren't like little like newborn, um, you know, size anything. They are, he is a toddler. And it holds enough stuff for him for a trip to grandma's house or the school run so that I don't have to worry about taking a diaper bag. Um, Emmett takes the bus, but sometimes he misses the bus and we have to run out the door. And this is perfect for that. So um, yeah, I'm sure you guys can think of more uses. Okay, let's see how many bottles fit. So, let's see. So I love it. Somebody made a toiletry bag um, for their hairspray bottles. So that's three, okay, four, and a, and a face cream. So, hey, that's pretty good. So also makeup brushes, and then also um, someone used a different configuration of elastic on the back and put medical supplies in it. So I think there's more uses than just a snack bag. It's super cute. I think they'd be good for markets for, um, they're just cute. Somebody's going to walk past that and they're going to laugh. And that is the point. It's funny and we all need a laugh. Um, it's functional. There's a lot of different uses for it. They don't take up a lot of fabric, they're quick to make. And, um, this is canvas. All of this is canvas. I hope that you can make and sell them. And um, if nothing else, I hope you, your kids love them and I hope you can laugh at them. Banana. Yeah, banana. Jack, can you say bye?